Even though I'm from Caucasus region, I grew up in Moscow and my family wasn't religious. Nobody talked to me about God, about the prophets, about the scriptures, nothing of religious nature. I grew up in standard Soviet family. Therefore, as I mentioned in one of my videos, it took me a while to figure out the issue of religion. I studied history and I came across three main groups that are called monotheistic religions, the ones that don't teach idol worshipping. These are Judaism, Christianity and Islam. All three believe in one God, that our forefather is Adam, yet in many other ways they have a lot of differences. So I decided to figure out everything. I'm on my way to the city center right now. And you know what, there's a beautiful mosque that called Ulu Jami. Right on the middle of it there's a fountain. I think you're gonna like it. I'll tell you this. In this story, you will discover the amazing secrets of our world. I will talk about the beginning of creation, the creatures that you didn't know about. So please, don't freak out. We are not the first creations of our Lord. There are creatures that were created before us, before humans. Angels and Jinns. Angels, they are extremely strong great beings with no gender. They are created from light and they carry out absolutely all the commands of our Lord without questioning. And they are not the cherubs that you might have seen in the pictures, but these are creatures that reach unimaginable sizes. Angels are sinless and they have no freedom of choice and freedom of expression. Therefore, they don't disobey our Lord. In this regard, they are like robots. Angels can transform into people and each of them has their own responsibilities. For instance, some are instructed to protect people, others to convey the instructions or commands and bring down the holy scriptures to the messengers. You've probably noticed, in the movies they often show how Satan allegedly sits on the left and incites a person to sin, and on the right is an angel who encourages to do good. So the angels help people in good deeds and hold them back from doing bad deeds. Also, there are angels who record all the words and actions of a person, both bad and good. And based on this, a person will be presented with an account after his or her death. There are angels who take the soul of a person when it is time to go. By the way, if it is the soul of a believer, they extract it very gently. But if this is the soul of a disbeliever, then they extract it very roughly and harshly without showing any mercy. There are angels who are responsible for rain, plants and food. There are angels who control the mountains, who carry the throne of the Lord and so on. There are a lot of them. Beside the angels, as I mentioned, other beings were created before us. These are jinns. People call them spirits, demons or boogeymen. Throughout history there has been many eyewitnesses, although those who saw or heard them didn't realize that they were jinns. They mistook them for ghosts, UFO or even aliens. Their nature is fire. If humans, for example, are made of clay and angels are made of light, then jinns are made of fire. Yet, we don't consist of clay as such, it is our primary substance. Same with jinns, their forefather was made of fire, from its elements, but not made of fire as such. So, there are male and female jinns that are capable of sexual intercourse and reproduction. They have intelligence and free will, just like humans. Among them, there are Jews, Christians, pagans, disbelievers and Muslims. They can move very quickly over long distances and carry heavy objects 
and still remain invisible to us. A jinn can enter the human body and move within veins with blood flow. Before us, humans, they were inhabitants of the earth. But they rejected and disobeyed the Lord and they spread mischief on the earth. So as a punishment, God Almighty sent the angels on them who destroyed most of them. But the remaining part, the small part, hid in the islands and caves. Among the jinns, there was one who stood out by his diligence in worshipping God. And as a result, angels, with the permission of God, took him to paradise. There, along with the angels, he worshipped God and praised him for a very long time. And he was very God-fearing and righteous. But further events radically changed his situation. God decided to create Adam, our forefather, and made him his representative on earth. And before the creation of Adam, peace be upon him, the Lord commanded, When I give him a proportionate appearance and breath into him from my spirit, then all prostrate before him. Absolutely all the angels obeyed the order of God, but there was one jinn who refused. His name is Iblis. As I mentioned, angels don't have freedom of choice. But jinns do. They have a soul that incites them to sin, pretty much like people. And like humans, they can both obey and disobey the Lord. So Iblis chose to disobey God. And the reason for his refusal to prostrate to Adam was his arrogance. He considered himself a better creation than Adam. The Lord said, What prevented you from prostrating when I ordered you? Iblis replied, I'm better than him. You created me from fire and him from clay. Iblis considered that the fire is better than the clay. By the way, from here we can conclude. If one nation thinks that they are better than the other nation, based on their origin, they make the very same mistake as Iblis. Iblis was expelled from paradise for disobedience. In response to this punishment, Iblis asked the Lord God, then delay my end until the day when they, people, will be resurrected. I shall beautify for them evils on the earth, and I shall lead all of them astray, except for your chosen servants. So Iblis asked to delay his death until the day of judgment, so that he can tempt people and seduce them from the straight path, because he hated Adam. And the Lord gave him that respite. Obviously, we have to understand that the Lord knew in advance, even before the creation of Iblis and mankind, that Iblis would disobey him, and this is what he was created for. God decided so, and this is his wisdom. From that moment, seducing people and constantly misleading them became Iblis's main focus and objective. He will do this until the day of judgment. And he also has helpers among humans and jinns, they join him and carry out his commands, so in return they get some privileges. You've probably heard about the Freemasons or you've seen the stars of showbiz referred to as Illuminati. They display all the signs of their commitment to the devil and everyone has heard about the rituals of baby sacrificing and much more. The internet is full of information on this topic, you can check it for yourself. The party of Iblis will be gathered on the Day of Judgment and thrown into the fire. Meantime, the main task is to bring as many people as possible off the straight path. The straight path is the pure monotheism, which is dedication of absolutely all the rites of worship to only one God, and no one else. This is the most important command of our Creator. This is the meaning of the creation of all things. So, people must worship, ask, rely on hope, trust, fear, strife, love, defy only the creator of all things, true one God, but not his creation. One must be absolutely certain that everything that befalls him, whether good or bad, wealth, poverty, health, illness, high position or vice versa humiliation, Absolutely everything in the world depends on the Lord God, and none of his creation has any power whatsoever. Respectively, the main prohibition of God and the main task of Iblis is the opposite of monotheism, which is polytheism. So, deification, worship, 
asking for blessings, recovery, wealth, and so on, from God's creations, be it saints, prophets, statues, paintings, graves, and so on. Everything is extremely simple. So every time people deviated from monotheism and changed religious scriptures, the Lord sent a new messenger to bring them back to the straight path. And so, my friends, our God sent more than 125,000 prophets and messengers throughout the history of mankind. The names of some of them are familiar to us. Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, Solomon, Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. And here we come to the end. For me as a person who is looking for the truth, whatever it is, it is obvious that being on the straight path means being a monotheist. Well, monotheism naturally implies submission to God, the creator of everything, the acceptance of his prophets, scriptures, commands and prohibitions. And I don't want to be like Iblis, who knew our Lord but still disobeyed him. Knowing God alone is not enough, submission is also needed. And so, my friends, in the last generation, the Lord sends Jesus, peace be upon him, to the lost sheep of Israel, to the Jews. But they didn't want to accept him. They didn't want to recognize his prophetic mission, in spite of all miracles that Jesus, peace be upon him, showed to them. They called him a sorcerer, a liar, threw stones at him, and even tried to kill him. It was a huge mistake that I didn't want to make. I believed in Jesus and his prophetic mission. But after Jesus, peace be upon him, the Lord sent the new prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to all of humanity. And now all those who accused the Jews of not accepting Jesus made the same mistake themselves. They rejected the last prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, Alhamdulillah, I didn't make the same mistake as well. I didn't follow my desires and opinions of others, and it doesn't really bother me that those around me upon one religion or another. All that matters is the truth. People will not save me on the day of judgment, so I took the truth, whatever it was. I believed that there is none worthy of worship except the one God. And I also believed in all his prophets and messengers, including the last prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. This is how, my friends, I chose my religion and I found my own way. How did you come to your religion? Feel free to leave your comments.